And we're live, I think. Maybe? Yes, I have... <laughs> yeah, I wasn't hugely prepared for this live stream, and then in the last half an hour, I was just getting things set up. Everything went wrong. Computer crashed like five times. Webcams just dying left, right, and center. But I think we've just about made it into a stream, and only two minutes late. Huh. So yeah, we're like two webcams down, so I don't have anything to actually monitor the Prusa Mini. So this is the best angle you're going to get, <laughs> because everything else is just dead for some weird reason. So yeah. Whew. I need a break. <laughs> We've only just started. Happy New Year to everyone, and welcome to Vector 3D for 2020 in this weird picture frame of a 3D printer. Yeah, this is what it is. So, in the last episode, we modified... Last episode? Last live stream episode? Whatever you want to call it. We modified a kind of bunch of the Y-axis assembly, uh, including some metallic wheels and big belts, big motor. That's all done. That's been working for a little bit now. It's not hugely successful. Uh, the wheels, as we suspected during the previous live stream, were not optimal. They're not that loud, and they did kind of do what I wanted them to, as in the whole thing stays rigid. But it seems to be, I think, wearing out the aluminium profile a little bit quicker than I had expected. So there's now this like dark black brown goop on there, which I think is like aluminium dust, which Probably not the best thing to have on your fingers. Oh, chat, 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 chat. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. I don't actually have any... I don't have the YouTube thing up, so I don't actually know how many people are here. Presumably... Oh, oh yeah, 31. Cool. For the first time in ages, there isn't a, a Joe's uh, 3D printing nerds... 3D printing nerd. 3D Maker Noobs stream before mine, so I'm on my own today. I mean, I'm on my own anyway, but you know what I mean. There's no stream raids going to happen halfway through, so we can just relax. So today what I'm planning to do is add this. So I was going to show you this assembly. Oh, I can just show you. Oh, but the camera's all the way over there. And this arm doesn't work. So I wanted to, the the downside now because we've only got one camera and it's miles over there. It's not very easy to do close-ups of smaller things like this. So maybe I'll just bring it over to the camera and give you a little look close up, so you know what I'm doing, and then we'll get on with fitting it to here. And maybe we'll do some actual duet configuration because that's something I've kind of wanted to show on the stream as well. Maybe not that exciting, but. Who knows? Different people find different things interesting. Uh, it's not totally assembled. I started the assembly because I thought I was going to do it quicker, but then other parts and stuff happened. So let me just pop over to the camera. This is the alternative to having a second camera today. It's just me walking over to the camera. Uh, can we see that okay-ish? Maybe. Can we rotate the light a little bit? Ooh. Aha, does that kind of work? I have no idea if it's in focus, but basically this is the standard kind of old now Titan. Obviously Hamira and Titan Air are all newer than this, but I had this laying around, not in use, so it seems a suitable candidate for this. This is the Fetus, or Fetus, depending on how you want to pronounce it, uh, hot end. Some people are calling it the Dragon hot end. I think that's when it's resold by Triangle Labs as something similar or different or what. Not really sure, but this is what this is. And then under here, obviously, is the rest of that and the nozzle in the end. Can't remember exactly which nozzle this is. I think this might be the copper plated nozzle. So, and then you've got this little sock over the end. This is not the perfect one, so this is kind of square design for this weird rectangular thing. But this was the like early early design that they had available at uh, Formnext. So, I have a second one of these as well that they gave me so the one on the left I believe is the low flow rate design and the one on the right is the high flow rate 
So there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of difference other than the position of this copper heat sink and this kind of heat shielding below it. Not totally sure how much of an effect those things are going to have. Sorry if it's really blurry and whatever, but yeah, this is the mount that's going on here. Uh. Did I not? I'm pretty sure I did get the Streamlabs. Uh, I thought I'd sorted it because I did check after the stream and I thought it was working. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Just, <laughs> just deal with the stream. <laughs> Watch the stream and enjoy it. I'm not too worried about getting little tips, any tips of any size. Not too bothered, to be honest. Just wanted to have some fun building a printer with other people that like printers. So, so yeah, it is basically, um, as far as I can tell, it is very close kind of to a mosquito in kind of design. That's definitely the closest relative. And then obviously there's some E3D V6 elements in there too, kind of just because it's round, I guess. Fundamentally, it's very similar to the mosquito. Not sure quite where it stands in terms of patents and copyings and things like that. Uh, honestly, I've not looked into it very much at the moment. I suspect there may be some uh, closeness, shall we say. But I'm going to give it a go anyway, because I think it will be fun. So that's that. That's going to be going on. And then somewhere I should have a BL Touch because I've got a BL Touch mount, but I've lost my BL Touch. Oh, I've broken one as well. That was a different story. Uh, la -da 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 -da. I'm coming back. I'm just getting a thing. Here we go. Right. I was actually going to do a, uh, a volcano hot end before doing this because I've had that now probably for like eight months and still not put it on. It's a Volcano with a Nozzle X with a big fat open nozzle. But yeah, not done that. So, excuse me, just had dinner, still coming back up. <laughs> this is a fan that I'm gonna be sticking on with a cooling duct that I designed. Again, sorry, it's so far away. That's just what we have to deal with today, unfortunately. Cooling duct there, fan, Obviously, the rest of the duct is going to be removed off there. That's going to clip onto there. Then in here, we have the old mount for the BL Touch and the BL Touch fitted. It doesn't say I'm live. Where does it say I'm... Does something say I'm not live still? Is YouTube and... See, I thought I'd fixed all this. <laughs> it's so difficult to configure nowadays. Yeah, it says I'm live. What are you talking about? Streamlabs says... Okay, YouTube on the first page said 74 viewers. YouTube on this page says 44, and Streamlabs says 39. Cool, I am live. Yeah, it does seem to be working. So much confusion. I was, I'm also not signed into chat on here. I don't know why that's the thing, but it is. Because I'm signed into chat, uh, signed into my account on Streamlabs, but uh, it's, it's not worked. Um, it's not signed me into YouTube. Uh, this print that we're doing here, I, as I mentioned, I was trying to get the close-up sorted like we had on the previous stream, so you could actually see it printing. Uh, but unfortunately, for due to reasons, basically, uh, camera broke. So the print, the print itself is the Fotis 
Fortis Mint, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, oh, it's the Game of Thrones guy. They're like, now I look like an idiot. You know the guy, like the Ice King. I've forgotten the right name. <laughs> Hopefully somebody knows what I'm talking about and can help me elaborate. The link is in the description though. So if you want to know exactly where it is, that's probably the best place to look. So I'm just going to start by removing this. Oh, no, I'm not, because that doesn't fit. Time to use some dodgy tools. Night King, I think, is the correct term. Yeah, it is in the description if you want to check out the model. It is free, so you can go ahead and download it yourself. It's obviously designed to be printed much larger than I'm printing, but the plan was to print it during the live stream, we view it, and that would be the end of the stream. But in this case, hang on, I just said that completely wrong. I'm getting all a bit muddled. It's normally a large print. Like, I think it was going to be 10 hours, but I shrunk it down so that we can make it about two hours about the length of the live stream. So that's about how long we're planning to go for today. Hour and 53 minutes left on the print. So somewhere in the region of two hours from now will be the end. If things stop going badly, That'll be what happens. <laughs> oh dear. For some reason, I stacked a load of washers on the end of this, and I think I might have to for my new one as well, because that's now missing in my cab design. Yep. So, it's really frustrating not having a closer camera. I can only apologise for that. Nothing I can really do about it now. So to mount this BL touch I've basically got two screws now. They were going down so this time we're going up just because reasons. Uh, going up through the end of there. Those holes are way too small. It should be just clearance holes. Uh, and then a few washers. I'm not sure if I need them but they were on the last design because the offset was obviously not quite right, and I copied the offset for this design, so I assume I'm going to need them again. So I'm just going to stack those on as well. And then we've got this small little bracket, which is basically just kind of a weird block, which is going to hold it in place like this. Damn it, you can't see. Like this. Hopefully that should work quite nicely. Uh, Before we do that, we need to get these all nuts down in here. Ugh. Right, uh, let's just use a screw of this. This is, these holes in this BL touch are way too small. They're designed on for M3 screws, I'm sure, but they're, they're like three mil holes for a three mil screw. Silly, silly. So hopefully by, I'm just trying to basically thread this screw onto the nut very slightly. It should help me pull it through. Hmm. I'm just going to basically pull this down in here. There we go. Not sure if that's all the way, but I think it will be far enough. Hmm. Not fully considered that. Uh, need a longer screw to help me fit it because it's not going to reach as it is. So hopefully if we stick that through there, can you sort of see, oh it's frustrating, Shall I, maybe I'll just, just bring the camera in closer, should I give that a go, what do you reckon, it means I have to like move every time, move the camera every time I want something further out, but 
I think as it is, you're never going to see anything. So let's. If you get motion sick from a camera moving, uh, close your eyes about now. There we go. Oh, Matt. Matt One UK 3D Printing has donated five pounds. Thank you very much. Clearly it didn't come up on screen, but it did work. Thank you very much for that. Very much appreciated. So those nuts are now in here. The, are the tungsten carbide nozzles superior to copper? This is a good question. So in terms of just technical properties, like material properties, yes, it's definitely superior to copper. It has a higher conductivity, which means the heat transfers through the material much easier, which basically means more heat transfer which is good because more heat transfer equals more melty filament. Uh, tungsten carbide is also much harder, which means it's very resistant to uh, abrasive materials like things that are carbon filled. Uh, other than that, I've not tested enough in depth to know it's, if it's kind of objectively better in real world testing. But I've been using the tungsten carbide nozzles on the dice design stuff for quite a little while and I've not had any issues at all. Obviously because they're a different nozzle geometry I can't compare them directly to copper nozzles because there's not one nozzle that fits both but they're really good well from what I've had they're really good so I would recommend them that's for sure. Okie dokie so that's the BL touch mounted on there. Have I got that confused with something else? Tungsten carbide has higher thermal conductivity. Yeah, it does. Though it's higher than brass. If you've just looked it up, then maybe I'm wrong on that. It is a very high thermal conductivity. I'm pretty sure it's higher. I'm pretty sure thermal conductivity of tungsten carbide is really, really good, isn't it? Maybe you can correct me on that one now. So this whole fan setup is pretty pants, to be honest. But it's, uh, it's what I've got. All the wires are all pre-done, so... Copper four times better than tungsten carbide? No, surely not. Oh well. Coppers are also really, really soft though, so. This. I've got well confused there then. I could have sworn that it was an exceptional. Uh, I'm going to have to Google it now as well. Don't mind me. Three hundred and eighty five. Hundred and ten. 
Yep, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, so copper is 385 watts per meter Kelvin, whereas tungsten carbide is only 110. So, yeah, like three and a half ish times better. Hmm. Still seems pretty fine to me. I could have sworn it had a really good thermal conductivity. That's really thrown me off now. I was like, I know that. Turns out, I don't. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I need some more nuts for this. So this is the little bracket that's going to mount the fan. Just about works. It was literally the first printout of it I did. I've not had any time to revise or improve the design. So it is what it is and it shall not be changing. Well, for purposes of right now, anyway. And three nylock nuts. So many cables in here. A two inch country, would you go five inch or seven inch? Uh, mine's a seven inch, and I think that's quite a good size. But then again, yeah, I've got the space for it, so. To be honest, totally up to you. I don't think it's going to make a massive difference. Because the controls are not that uh, complex, you don't really, oh, you don't need anything to, I don't know how to put this. The controls are simple, so a, a small screen is probably more than enough to be able to navigate them without any issues. These screws are way too long, but it'll be all right. This is the only thing that matters if it meets the performance requirements for the task at hand. Depends who you ask, eh? <laughs> he had a review machine coming from Artillery 3D, but UK, yeah. <laughs> UK Customs obviously don't like things with uh, the name Artillery written on the box, for some reason. So, we're going to have to find an alternative method for shipping that. It's weird because it, I sp in theory, there's nothing illegal about importing it. This, it's a 3D printer. It's just the fact that it says artillery on the box, I think. These screws are just stupidly long. It's frustrating me how long they are. They're probably going to get in the way because the threads are so long. Let's test that before we go any further because I can actually change it. No, it's sort of just about okay. It's all a little bit loose anyway. It'll do. What printer is that? Yeah, it's the Extrudinator, which is my own design. There is a, oh, I forgot to put the link in the description. Uh, if you look for Extrudinator on Prusa printers, you'll find it. It is basically, uh, yeah, you're right, a CR10 on steroids. It is, it's not quite as tall as a CR10. The Z dimension didn't work out quite as I hoped it would. There was a little bit of hope going on there. It shouldn't have been. I did do it all in CAD, so I've got the whole model, but for some reason I balled it up a little bit. So the height is not quite as high as it could be, but I could probably, maybe we'll do that. That'd be the, another stream maybe. We'll get some longer ones of these and some, uh, something to mount the motor a little bit higher. I don't think that's going to take much. And then we can boost the whole lot up 
get a little bit more height. Bish bash bosh. Dot done. Totally not artillery equipment. Somehow I'm not sure that's going to convince them otherwise. Right, so now we have this dodgy little fan on this suspect little mount. And that sort of fits on there. I'm not, I really don't know if this is supposed to have a cooling fan or not. I don't know if a mosquito one does, and I don't know if this one should. At the moment it does, because I didn't want to need one and not have it. I'd rather have one and not need it. So that's what that looks like. Not super perfect, but not too bad at all. Uh, no, not Philistruder. Philistruder is... Excuse me, sorry. Isn't Philistruder US? Because I'm based in the UK. This is all kind of European parts. Well, in fact, it's almost entirely UK. So Oosnest supplied 90% of the parts. The only thing that isn't is this whole bed assembly. So the surface, the sheet, the magnetic, the bed. Uh, not this bit. All of this bit kind of here, the heater upwards is all from Philofarm. So they're a, a German company. Philofarm.com, I believe you can go to, or philofarm.de will both take you to where you want to be. I do need some more M3 screws now. Do, 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 do. Might be able to use what's in here. Philofarm. Artillery not actually included. Artillery sold separately. I do love having a big box of screws, so I'm not sure quite what length I'm going to need for these. I think this length is probably about right. It's going to go on here. Okay, if I'd have designed this with a bit more time, I probably could have got all of these lengths sorted, but it is what it is. Philofarm.com, philofarm.de, philofarm, philofarm, yes, that place. They're pretty expensive, to be honest, but they're also pretty good, so if you want the good stuff, it is expensive. So this is how the BR Touch mounts on the front. It's really kind of janky, but it's also much further away from the hot end than I would like. So far from ideal, but it will work to get something initially set up, hopefully. Print's looking pretty dandy. Hour and 36 minutes left. I feel like I'm racing the clock now. Right, that's on there. This is what we've got. You might recognize parts of this. So this is the fan mount. That bottom part there is based on the uh, Prusa Mark 2S, I think it was, cooler. I've just kind of expanded some geometry upwards. It's like a mirror mirror image and then expanded upwards. Again, pretty janky. It's not like, well designed but it fits and that was like the main priority well hopefully it fits i don't actually know yeah i think that'll you know, kind of touching the hot end uh, hmm maybe some additional washes would be good it is a little bit close let's get some professional washers Washers. So if we can stick a few of these in each side, that'll just space it off enough to actually work. I don't think I've ever, I might have done once dropped a large box, but they were all the same, so it was not too bad. Right. This 
the custom order stuff takes just as long as everything else though so you're probably not too bad off doing that I'm surprised they don't though do they not okay well if you've just checked you've just checked so To be fair, they're not exactly designed for low-cost machines, so maybe that's why they don't bother. I don't know. It would be a little bit odd to spend what they ask for on a very cheap printer. I suppose it doesn't make it wrong, though. To be honest, I wouldn't be too afraid of ordering the custom stuff. There's not, like... It's quite expensive anyway because I think they make everything custom regardless. I don't know. But I don't think it's significantly more expensive to just ask them what you want. Okie dokie. There we go. So that's how it kind of maps towards the bottom of the hot end. Again, don't know if it's going to be entirely necessary like that, but it should fit and should work. Always the most important things. Uh, now we need a fan. Oh. Darn it. <laughs> I don't think I have a 24 volt uh, blower fan which is a little bit unfortunate. Let me have a look. Oh, I do. They're all 24 volts. Excellent. I'm going to have to do some re to get the right connector on it. It's got a JST thingy at the moment, so we'll have to switch that out. I forgot to post on Twitter, didn't I, that we were live? Never mind. Um, hopefully this will fit here. Oh, like a glove. It is nice when stuff just all fits the first time. Extremely satisfying. I'm so ill prepared. Nuts. Let's just bring the whole box, even though I don't think I'm going to need any more now. <sighs> this is now right in the way of the camera as well. Really nailed that one, haven't I? What's that? Yeah, that's good. Uh, screw, screw, screw. Nut. straight oh, 
All right. So that's got the fan in. That's going to be on there. That's that. Fans there. That's that. Ah, hot end and what's it on there? Probably should have done that before attaching the fan. Oh, darn it. Now I have to take the whole lot apart to get to the hot end. Yes, we can. Let's just wing it the other way. So, the the actual hot end itself doesn't come with the parts that you need, so I've ordered some separately and crossed my fingers that they're going to be what I need. So the first thing is a heater cartridge, of course. So I've gone for 40 watts, 24 volts to match the rest of the system. Incidentally, what Prusa uses, pretty much, not exactly maybe, but basically the same thing. So that should be about right, I think, for what I want. I'm not sure. Let's put that in that side. Doop doop doo. And then tighten this up. The advantage of having some square size on this extruder is that you can actually grip it hot end. Right, that's that on there. Easy peasy. Now, next thing I need to do is the thermistor. Again, it's basically the same kind of standard thermistor setup. I'm going to have to do some modification here because I need it to work just like I've done with this lot. God, what a mess that is. So this is the Titan Aero, which I started with on the Extrudinator. Yay, subscriber. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, so yeah, that is that. I'm basically going to copy this hot end and extruder, hot end and thermistor setup. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of wiring, unfortunately. I know a lot of people are not particularly a fan of watching. That's not going to go in. Right, let's remove the whole flame in lot. That's clearly all just going to fall off of there, isn't it? So, thermistor. That looks different and more robust than the old stuff. It's way thicker. No. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Hopefully, just the same though, in terms of electrically, just the same. Hello. I don't know about Hamira, to be honest. I don't have one. I'm not super inclined to buy one, to be honest. He's kind of... Because so many of the other YouTubers already have them and are probably going to be reviewing them and all that kind of stuff, it just seems kind of redundant to me have, for me to have one as well, especially to pay for one. It's just daft. There's plenty of... Well, are there any actual reviews out there yet? Don't know if there are, actually. But, yeah, I'm just... Not super inclined to put the effort in, to be honest. Right. Oh dear. It's all getting a little bit short on space in here. Hour and 24 minutes left. What's the chances we can get this done? Probably slim, but we're going to try. So, we need to do some cable modification now. We do need that, we don't need that. 
Don't need that. Let's get rid of bits we don't need. Just over there. That can go over there. That can, oh. Could have just used the old thermistor. I've got two thermistors in there. I just bought three new ones. <laughs> what a fool. So, got some extra thermistors and stuff there. Because I've obviously got this second one, which I'm not doing right now. I've got some extra nozzles as well. There's some 0.4 and 0.6 nozzles in here. Some hardened, some copper plated. Plated copper. I'm not sure what the other ones are. I think they might be hardened steel or something. I don't really know. Can't really remember. But got a little collection of nozzles that I can use. Right. Let's try and do some electrical wiring stuff. Don't need to modify that. Don't need those two. Don't need that. I don't know if they're bringing a new version out, honestly, James. They, <laughs> they just offered to send me one. I'm assuming it's a little bit different. If it's not that different, then I think the review is going to be pretty short. But um, I need this. I need some terminal things. Let's start with these. I think these is what I need. Is that right? Oh, so many connectors and things now. If you want to know if it's still going to be going, there's about an hour and 20 minutes left, so that'll give you a rough idea. Uh, we're going to need one of these, two of these. Um, 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 um. These are the little connectors that I use, all standard on everything, so makes everything a little bit easier to organize than it would otherwise be. I think that's the same as those, isn't it? Yep, that's those. So I'm going to... Oh, that just disappeared. Uh, now, what connectors do we need on the... These ones, so a few of those. Uh, we need one of these, or one of those. Oh, they're very different. That's that. Oh, that's that's the same as that. Okay, I need this. So the connectors I use are all locking connectors. Just for my own peace of mind as much as anything else. It's nice to know that stuff's not just going to randomly fall out without any warning. And they're still pretty easy to unclip and everything for changing stuff, so all works pretty well. So it's difficult to know exactly what the length these need to be. Although I suppose we could just stop being lazy and try it. So this is going to go, oh. oh needs to go up a little bit. I'm going to do it electronically.
How are we doing for progress? Not too bad. Hour and 20 minutes left. Hmm. This is it working. Oh shit, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Stop, 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 stop. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, trying to home a printer without a blooming probe. What a dipstick. I just want to raise Z. Oh, why does it have to be so difficult? Okay, well, forget that. That's all right. The bed's out of the way now, so we can just do this. That's got enough length to get to there. So this needs enough length to get to there. Somewhere about there. This is the mildly terrifying bit when you just chop the leads off the thing that you just bought. <laughs> there you go. Chop that off. Don't need those. Probably. <laughs> Being a Muppet on live stream is, seems to be just a very natural thing for me. There's quite a few things to think about, I think, when doing a live stream. It's quite normal to just totally mess it up. So, that's my excuse anyway. I know this is not a good way to cut cables, and I have a wire stripper right here, but because it's this weird heat sheathed wire, it doesn't really strip particularly well, so I tend to use these cutters for this and never any other time. Right, I think last time I had to remove some of the the red stuff as well. Yes. So I need to trim back this heat protective. I think that's what it does. It's kind of braided cover a little bit. Helps everything fit a bit better. Although this is just making a mess and not really doing a whole lot, so... Maybe I did it last time by accident rather than deliberately. So that, now we've got to put these crimp connectors on here. What's the chance of this going well? Why don't I make this a little bit easier for myself and take it out of here? Nice, okay. So it's a little bit long at the moment. Let's cut it down a fair chunk. Right, that's good. 
I think we have to use the next one up this time. Oh, have I messed that up? I think I have. Oh, seems to. Oh no, <laughs> it goes. Oh, fudge. <sighs> Don't just love it when a plan falls apart. I need to get that out. I have a tool, but I don't know where it is. Aha, it might be in here. So we've got a little kind of pin removal tool. So you just basically, it's like it looks kind of like a set of tweezers. You push the, uh, the little pins down the side of the connector, down the side of the connector. And then it comes out. Unfortunately now I have to cut this all off because I made a mess of it. Okay, okay, see you in a bit. Oh, thank you for the tip. Sorry, before you go. You were probably already gone. Much appreciated. Oh, by the way, for people here, don't forget to like. <laughs> and subscribe if you haven't already. We didn't quite make the, uh, the 10K for 2020, which is a little bit unfortunate, but not the end of the world. I'm not far off now. Should make it in the first couple of months of this year. It's never quite as busy at the start of this year as it is the end of the last, but... Hey ho. Oh, please don't say I've messed up another one. No, 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 no. I think that's okay. No, it's not okay. That's right. It's not fully on there yet. These connectors are difficult as anything to do. The small ones I seem to be fine with is these larger ones which really never go so well. the balloon. Oh, 
Oh, done it. Who'd have thought just adding a little connector would be so stressful? Right, I now need more connector pin things because I used three just to get one on. Let's see if I can do this one first time. That on there. Start it with that just to make sure it doesn't fall off. Use this very carefully. Start it. Make sure that, that goes straight. Crush it a little bit. Release just to make sure everything is going straight. All looking good. Nine that up. Bish bash brush. Yeah. So now we should be able to stick these in here. There we go. Now we've got the heater with a nice connector on the end. Whew, that was only slightly stressful. That should fit in there nicely. And we can tighten it back down. As long as we hold the right piece. Right, so that's what we've got now. Starting to look a little bit like a hot end. Uh, next thing we need to do is this cheeky little fan. So, again, I'm just going to hold it roughly in the position where it's going to go. So we can get an idea of how long the cable needs to be. To somewhere there will be enough. Something like that. Oh. <laughs> so we'll cut that off, giving myself a little bit of wiggle room. Don't need that. Right, now I've said I can do these, I better do them properly. <laughs> probably not doing it like the right way I kind of discovered this whole process my own my own myself on my own whatever the correct wording is there uh, I think yeah it's these ones that we need so these are the kind of female ends I know this is probably not the correct thing to do, but I always like start the crimp so it holds the wire and then just finish it gently. Like a so. That's one down and just with the other one like that. Line it up, gently crimp that. Stick it in here. Easy. So then we've got to make sure we put the pins in the right place. So the black goes to the one with the arrow. And the black one to the one with the arrow. Red one to the other one. First time. That's that lot done, and then, of course, lastly, I need this thing for the thermistor. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Did I ask for that already? Liking and subscribing? I did the likes. Did I do the subscribes? Long day. No idea. 
this I don't think needs to be very long at all but I can't make the original cable longer so it's just going to be as long as it needs to be which is literally like a few inches with a little bit extra just to make sure I've got enough those will go in my leftover cable storage if anybody has any questions that which I might know the answer to or about the printer itself feel free to ask now is a good time to do so oh. I hate not getting these right because you can't really just add a little bit extra. It's difficult to. There we go. More terminals. An hour and three minutes to go. So we're halfway through the stream now. Things are progressing okay. We're nearly there on the hardware side of things, I think. Can we configure software in an hour? We won't be doing a print today, so if you had your hopes up for that, I can only apologise. But there just simply won't be time. That's one. That's tether, so let's just check the original wiring just to see if we're doing it correctly. Uh, which one's which here? This is the downside of these E3D cables, they all look the same. So I think that's the fan one, that's this one. So for this, yep, black with the arrow. I, sh I think I standardized all my cables, but it's always worth checking just to be absolutely sure. Right, that's that. So we've got that little extension cable now for the, uh, the thermistor. That hot end all now looks pretty good, I think. Right, that's it for this. All the electrical doddery is all done. So, how do we actually assemble this to the printer? <laughs> um, need some screws. Don't know what screws. <laughs> Let's get, no, let's not put that on there yet because I think it's going to need to go on the printer first. Think, 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 think. Well, that's 100% not going to fit in there. So I've got three screws that I can actually use, probably. The fourth one, I'm not too bothered about. Um, I'm going to get some screws, hopefully with the correct size and length. Three by sixteen, I think, is probably going to be about right. They look quite long. Mm. I think we've got some twelves in the uh, in the tray. Let's just use those. I reckon a few more of these bad boys is going to be what I need to hold this in. That looks a bit long still. What's this? That looks too short. That's going to be by eight. So I need tens, which are back over there.
It's diddly, but it looks pretty cool. Get it? Um, ba -ba -ba. So, hopefully now, this doohickey will screw straight onto that doohickey. What's the chances, eh? And what holes do we need to use? These extra wide ones. Not a lot of clearance here for anything. Good, that's in. Screw number three. I'm being careful not to do these very tight because it's uh thread into aluminium which is basically like butter compared to a steel screw so got to be really careful with that um, I'm going to zip tie that to there uh, zip ties There's some medium sized zip ties in here somewhere. There we go. Chat's all gone quiet. It's all peaceful. Where's this go? I hadn't accounted for these cables. That was daft, wasn't it? <laughs> I guess that's going to be the best I can do. Right, time for a bit of a break. Good evening, little hobby shop. Fifty five minutes left. Now we've got to be really careful with this because that is dangling below the bed. So if the bed starts moving, that's going to be a problem. Hopefully BR Touch is going to be okay. There's a lot of hope going into this. Mainly hope, in fact. Oh, which 
which one of these this would be our touch <laughs> no blimmin clue so this is one's going to be motor that's the only four pin blue and white was for thermistor so that's this one where's blue and white gone blue and white blue and white thermistor big connector is going to be the heater so that one's easy to do uh, fans are black and red so there's two of those I never know which one's which but it doesn't matter too much I can just switch them if they're wrong I should know as it turns on or soon after and then we've got black and white which matches the BR touch colors so that one will go on there and then this one for the rest of the BL touch will go on here if we were swapping to inductive probe we'd have to do some other different wiring here but we don't we're not so that's fine <sighs> cables are slightly too long to manage well which is unfortunate that'll do i think at the moment we need to get these. I'm not going to manage to screw this in properly now. This needs some design improvement. I didn't account for the silicon sock when I designed this, so that's why it doesn't fit very well. But it will work initially, anyway, just as a proof of concept. And then I'll do some improvements a little later. Maybe we'll just stick with one screw at the moment. I think that'll be enough to hold it to begin with. Uh, that doesn't fit, this doesn't. No. And that does. Have you put a NEMA 23 on the Y axis? If you have, that's pretty awesome. I have indeed put a NEMA 23 on the Y axis. I'm glad you think that's awesome. It works pretty awesome too the NEMA 23. It's a pretty strong motor. I would show you, but it's not very easy because I only have this one camera today. So there we go, that's how long it takes. Now this clearly is a bit of a cably mess, which is not ideal. Cable management is not particularly my forte when it comes to 3D printing design. But nevertheless, we can give it a little go. Let's tie those all to that, these all to each other. That fan is barely on, to be honest, but it is on, so... <laughs> right. Now, do we try this? I don't normally like doing this, because it... I've probably twizzled one more than I've twizzled the other which means the whole thing goes off, which means the whole bed levelling doesn't work anymore, but it's not that it doesn't work, it just has to be recalibrated. Which I suppose at the moment means it wouldn't work. Just a quick tidy up of this. Just I'm gonna get those little bits off the desk before I start leaning on them or something. So now that we've got all that on, it's time to do some configuration. Oh, I shouldn't have bothered with the fan until I've heat tightened that nozzle because that's 
loses anything. Right. So this is where it all gets a bit interesting. I need a scene for showing my screen and all this kind of stuff. So let's set that up quickly. Don't think we're going to need that at the moment. Basically into computering now. <laughs> The stream quality has been all right there, hasn't it? We've not had any major problems there. Having that new graphics card has made it much more consistent. Much higher bit rate. Unfortunately, the camera is still rubbish, so... But it's also bumped up to 1080p. I think I was streaming at 720, 720p before, so that didn't look particularly nice, but... We've made it to the 90s now with our 1080p. At some point this year, I'll try and... Uh, get a capture card into the budget so I can uh, stream through my GH5 which should massively improve the quality as long as it doesn't massively degrade the reliability because I've heard capture cards can be a little bit picky okay so And a new, yes, wireless microphone. <laughs> I don't know how long batteries tend to last on wireless microphones. Hopefully, long enough to do a live stream. Let's get this on. This should really be held down here, but it isn't. So, that. Okay, so this is where we have to be mooch us careful. So it more might go a little bit black or dark or lose sound and stuff in a minute because I'm just about to set up a new scene. Yeah, it went dark. <laughs> it went dark there. I'm just going to set up a scene. I'll be back in like 30 seconds when it's set up and configured. I mean, you should hear things pretty soon. Okay, that should be some sound. Yeah, now we need browser. Hopefully this should be fine to share. Oh no, that's not what I want. Oh, that should have worked, but it doesn't seem to be showing anything, strangely. Uh, yes, it is a genuine BL Touch. That is a full, full price, full fat BL Touch. The window capture doesn't seem to want to actually show anything. OK, 
Can you, you can hear me all right though, can't you? The, the audio should be fine, right? But it's just the... Uh, Now you can hear me and see me. So I'm just, what I'm trying to do is add a capture. Oh, it's, see, it's capturing something because it makes this all go black. But for some reason, it's not actually what I want to capture. Let's just restart Chrome, see if it will change its mind. Now we've got a white bar. That is absolutely correct that Chrome and OBS do not play well together. That is something I have just worked out. Let's use the really modern Edge browser. See if that one works a little bit better. internal web component. I really should have looked this up before the live stream. It doesn't even recognize uh, the existence of the Edge browser. Oh, here we go. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Oh, look, there's a cursor on the screen. <laughs> I sincerely apologize for the quality. I don't have Firefox. Let's see if we can get Firefox quickly. Yeah, browser source is what I started with, but that's for a fixed web address, isn't it? But I won't be able to control that if I use that. Once OBS realizes that I don't have Edge anymore, it might find Firefox. Please find Firefox. Firefox.
Well, that kind of screws that plan, doesn't it? This is going really well. <laughs> right, now you can see everything, which is not particularly what I wanted to do. Okay, so this is not quite how I wanted to do it, but hopefully this will work just fine. So what we want to do is I'm gonna I spend a lot of time looking up G code by the way because I never remember any of them. Uh, so this should be a big list of all the G codes. So I want to uh, There's a code somewhere, I think it might be 592 rings a bell, but I'm not sure. No, it's not 592. 492? Uh, there's a G code for ignoring... I don't think I have set up a macro for it, did I? Uh, da -da 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 -da. So I think these are the ones I'm after. No, maybe not. I don't think what I'm going to be able to do, I want to just, yeah. M208. Oh, five, six, four, H naught, let's just copy that. So that's what I was trying to do. 
I just wanted to be able to move the Z axis up without having to uh, home everything. Uh, of course, you can't see actually what's happening with the printer now, can you? Or can you? Uh, if we stick that over the top. Uh, what? There we go. Oh, yes. I shouldn't have done that manual twisting. I should have just waited till I powered it on. That was stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. I don't really have a good way of adjusting them at the moment, so... Right. That's that thing sorted. So now I just want to make sure that this probe is correct. So let's do some calibration. The temperature sensors are probably all over the place because this is different a lot. Interestingly, not. With the duet, you can set up so that auto levels with the BL touch. Yeah, I've done the 564. That was the 564H0. Uh, the auto level does use the BL touch. I have a configuration. Obviously, I've been using this printer for a little while. Uh, but I'm moving from one configuration to the next the whole time, so. Firstly, I'm going to. Oh, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to delete them. I want to download them. They're all. There used to be a way to download them. Doing this live is a bad idea. <laughs> Why can I not download these files? And why does it keep going back to that page? Right click just allows me to rename and delete. I don't you might not be able to see that I guess on the stream, but there used to be a download option. Okay, well we won't be doing a backup then before we change anything. So Keeps this is getting actually quite frustrating. Keeps flicking back to the wrong. So that needs. Can I duplicate this and just access it twice? That might be easier. This thing is actually all over the place. Config. 
system time arrow config. Okay, now I can switch between them. Cool. Yeah, what I did before for getting the height is jam something in between the frame and here, but the bed is probably a better option, you're right. I'm not too concerned at the moment because I'm probably not going to do much. There's any... There you go, that'll do for now because I'm not going to print anything so it doesn't matter too much. So this is the config file that I have at the moment and this is the config file from when I ran Titan Arrow. This is clearly the other way around so I think this would be X, Y, Z and E so this has got to revert so I'm just going to add some Dies one, put in the Titan one, which is S1. That's odd. I wonder why it's not. I wonder, is that on Firefox as well, the little hobby shop? I wonder if it's Firefox that's causing a weird bug. I'm not sure. Steps per millimeter. So. Steps per millimeter is going to be with interpolation. So again, dies extruder is this type. Titan is going to be this type. Take a copy of that, stick that in there. Boom. Copy of that, stick that in there. Comment out. That one and this E669 now becomes E443.5, 433.5. Bosch. Everything else should be the same. It's not. <laughs> uh, same as I've had it just now, so that should be okay. Uh, speed changes, XYZ, E, I think. They're all the same anyway. What the hell happened there? Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Axis limits. So they're probably going to be a little bit squiff because the whole thing's offset now. Where's my axis limits here? Three five three hundred three hundred three three. Okay, I think that's probably y minus fifty. So that's going to be a difference. That's going to be totally different again. Probably this is going to be really inaccurate at the moment. I think I'll probably. I think these two are going to be okay. But this top one. 
I'm going to keep like that. I think that's fine. End stops. That should be as it is at the moment. Inductive probe, we don't have BL touch, we do. This Z needs to be recalibrated, so we'll stick that back at 0.0, .0 for now. Ah, I forgot to get these measurements. I can set up the vertical calibration without that. That'll be okay. I just can't do the auto bed leveling and stuff. So that's not too bad. So 500C hot end from dice design, 300C hot end from dice design. Now, this is a question here, isn't it? There's going to be a whole. So there's an M301 load of settings here, this lot. This should be okay for what I need. looks kind of too much now. H1, H0, that's the bed. I don't need that lot. That lots of the bed stuff anyway. That looks like some estimated values that are probably not very good. It looks like we're going to need some calibration to get it right. But that's okay. 280. Technically, I think these hot ends can do 500C. I've only got a 300 degree C thermistor, so it's definitely not going to be going to 500. I've got no real reason to go to 500 anyway. Uh, although it is pretty cool that it's possible, I'm probably not going to be using it. I don't have anything that needs more than 280 or anything, so I'm not going to be doing that. Right. I think configuration wise, that should be okay. Do a reset. Whoopie doop, boop, boopie doop, doop, boop. It's times like this when I would like a second monitor, hey? That would be useful. So that's now reset. And we should be, okay, so I'm gonna do, I run through these steps for, not connecting, test and calibrate. Ready to be, by sending 401, 401, let's just do that, and 401, 402. Just to check the wiring is correct. Yep, that works fine. Check the Z probe. Uh, web control is zero. Yep, Z probe zero. Probes are type that produces a continuous output. Hold the surface below the Z probe to cause it to trigger. Check the Z probe reading. Da 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 da. Which is a port shot pulse will trigger. Then the pulse will probably be too short for you to see. Proceed to the dynamic test. Apply power to the printer, connect to the printer. Da, da, da. If your printer is Cartesian or correct Y, home all. Position. Oh, yeah, home X and Y. So hopefully these still work. Uh, dashboard, home X. Uh, don't know if that's actually going to touch, so to be a little bit careful. Please work, please work, please work, please work. Yes. And why? Clunk, engage. Nice. So let's move uh, this across a bit. Ooh, too much. Let's get this. Ooh, 
Oh shit, wrong button. Wrong button. Whole table shakes when this bed moves. Uh, don't need that now. Next step. Position the bed head well above the bed. Yep, that should be far enough. Send G30 to do a single Z probe. This will deploy the probe and start the head descending towards the bed. Hold a surface below the print head to trigger the Z probe. This should trigger. If it doesn't, turn off the power. So this is just a test, a dynamic test without the kind of dead stop of the bed in place. So I'm just gonna start it, trigger it. It moves very, very slow. That worked. Good. Question is, does it go far enough beyond the nozzle? Yeah, I think that's enough, isn't it? Fuck, it wasn't triggered. So that should be okay. Hold your shootable surface, calibrate Z Pro pipe. Make sure the dynamic test is successful. Use X and Y to position the nozzle over the center of the bed. Jog the nozzle down until it's just touching the bed or just gripping a sheet of paper. If the firmware doesn't let you jog it down, use 564S naught. So this is where we need this. Send that and then we move down, 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 down. We go to go a little bit faster. Always terrifying doing that. <sighs> Tell you what, let's move back to the other scene now, shall we? Yee. So you can see what's going on on the printer. Oh, you could on that one actually, couldn't you? Well, there we go. So I'm just going to keep moving this down until it's really, really close. I think it's supposed to be like paper thickness away. That's just touching. This bet always makes me nervous. Once you have moved the dozer down, just touching the bed, send G92Z0 to make sure that it's determined that as zero. It's basically like a manual home, I suppose. Z now set to zero. The other scene was better, wasn't it? You could see more. To tell the firmware zero, jog the head up by five to 10 millimeters. Send the command G30 S minus one. The nozzle will descend, or the bed rise, well for me it's descend, until the probe triggers and Z height at which the probe stop will be reported. If you're using a nozzle contract Z probe, the trigger will blah, 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 blah. for any other height, da, 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 da. repeat from step five two or three times to make sure the trigger height is consistent. So now we're going to tip in this. And fingers crossed, it triggers in time. Yes. Z 2.87. Who's got a notepad? <laughs> Anybody got a notepad? Notepad, anyone? 2.87. Make a note. <laughs> uh, I actually don't have a notepad. have to use this piece of paper. 2.87, that's a large offset. So then we bump it five millimeters and send it again. Two point eight six eight. Ah, 2.87 was not accurate enough, hang on. Uh, 
uh, console. Oh, it was 2.870. Awesome. Move it up again. Send G30. Check the console for the result. Boom. 2.868. Couple more times and then we'll be done. Two point eight seven zero. One more time. Ding two point eight six eight. Uh what's the average of that? Two point eight six nine? <laughs> I think 2.869 will be close enough. That is a good idea. Let's do that right now, shall we? Oh, I do have this one. Macros. I really should use these like way more often. No. I can download these. Strange. Whoa. Oh no, that was my like reliability testing. How do you, we need to be relative moving. I suppose we can just G. G1 is move, isn't it? G0 uh, is rapid move. G1 is controlled linear move. G1, Zs. I want to do relative motion, not. Oh, G91, is it? Book we'll works from now on are relative to the last position. So Z five. You sure? Because it definitely says if I just do that. Yeah, see, it it fails. It gives me the wrong result. Now it's really bumming it. <laughs> so that'll go like that, like that, like that, like that. I think there's a way. Yeah, if you run G30, if you put a P command in, it will give you an average of them at the end. Trigger value, yeah. So if I do... Like I did here, starting at P naught. P 
A1, P2, P3, P4, P5. G1, F60, Z0. I have no idea what that does. What's S do? Calibration temperature. Okay, that's fine. So I need to do a restart now. How have we done for time? Nine minutes left. I think we're pretty much there for all the calibration I was planning to do today, so that's not too bad at all. That flipping sensor still just wants to flash. Oh, I forgot to do the uh, configuration actually as well. Config install Z Pro that's Inductive BL touch settings Z two point eight six nine. Turn off again. Right, let's give it a go. Let's give this macro a go. Let's risk it all. What are we at at the moment? Ah, no, before I do that, this needs to, we want to start by going. Oh, shit. Hello Pete. Yeah, you are very late, unfortunately. There's about five, ten minutes left. Let's run this. Please don't kill everything. Oh. Response too long. Oh, we need to have everything first. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that now. That's oh, that's actually everything else we were going to do, wasn't it? Oh, just press home all. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Stop! 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 That was risky. <sighs> Don't know what's going to hit what. Right, home X and home Y. Yeah, that macro fire was pretty dud. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> it was a, a five minute attempt. I'm pretty sure I could do better. Uh, my plan for 2020 is to do uh, May. Uh, I'm thinking trying to do a stream acceleration on that bed is a bit much. Um, uh, to try and do one stream every week. That's kind of the plan. And the day of the week on which I do it should be Wednesday, fairly consistently. That's my plan. And they're going to be streams like this, either working on this printer, because I, I, there's lots that I want to do on it, but I end up it's quite difficult to film 
well, I find it really difficult to film work like this because you end up, in order to make it kind of interesting to make a good enough like 10 minute video, you have to get some really, really like angle shots and you end up spending four times the amount of time it takes to actually do what you want to do because it spends so much time filming. So I figured we can get the kind of interesting stuff across in a live stream instead. And then, I mean, more angles than this because this stream has not worked particularly as I'd planned. I don't know how you're supposed to get more camera angles with webcams. Obviously, you just use proper cameras. Fortunately, you don't have the funds for that. But, yes, more live streams like this where it's working on a printer and hopefully me not embarrassing myself too much in the process. So there'll either be uh, like unboxings of new printers that I got in for review, things like that, or working on this. Like modifying extruders, changing beds, changing frames, changing all sorts, because that's kind of what this printer's for, it's for changing things. And although I do want to be able to print lots of things, I also want to be able to change lots of things. Which makes it kind of useful that I've got the Raptor over there, which I've not even used yet, because I don't trust it in the slightest. Uh, and the Sidewinder coming, because the Sidewinder I think is another one about the same size as this, so that's another machine that I can print kind of large on if I need to. So if I home Z, what's it doing? Okay, so that seems to have worked. I guess the thing now is to try heating up the hot end and see how absolutely mental that goes. Uh, that's a bit of a risk, isn't it? Um, not too sure how to go about doing that, to be quite honest. Uh, for starters, let's just try see if we can control this fan. Jobs, macros, test fans, what is this fire? No, I don't think that's going to help. This has got two minutes left, so I don't think we're going to be doing too much more now anyway. See, this is the... With PID tune, I'd not... I think the Duet has this weird, like, auto re... Like, you don't need to do a PID tune, I think. Don't quote me on this. I don't know if this is absolutely correct. But from some reading I was doing when I was working on other hot ends, they have a kind of setup that does its own kind of PID as it's working rather than having to do an explicit calibration process. Good evening. Yeah, I actually had this um, from all the way from Formnext. They gave me two of them at Formnext, but I just didn't tell anyone. <laughs> So yeah, I'm finally getting them on a machine because I had to buy my own hot, uh, heaters and thermistors and stuff like that. I know PID itself is critical to actually making it work, but I don't think you actually need to run a PID tune process. This is what I'm saying. I know you do on like Marlin firmware and stuff like that, but I think on Duet, oh, it's done. Uh, I think on Duet, you, you don't need to run it in, it doesn't work quite the same way. It's 
Still a bit of the dirty nozzle problem with this printer. You can't see anything. Right, let's... Yeah, on a printer rather than Marlin, PRD tune is critical. On Duet, I don't think it is. I think it works a little differently. Uh, so this is the print that I was printing. The link is down in the description. It's from Fortis Mint. I'm probably pronouncing that totally incorrectly, but that's my best attempt. So it's just, let's try and remove support material. That was not too bad. Looks like he's got a bit of a booger. So you can maybe see uh, in here and in here where I printed PETG on the nozzle last and didn't clean the nozzle. There's some like blobs of PETG that have just got stuck in the print just there. Otherwise, uh, let's see if we can actually get some focus on it. I'll let you be the judge of how good do you think it is. That's in uh, Pushman PLA Azure Blue on the Pusha Mini with a 0.4mm nozzle and 0.15mm layers, I think. Obviously designed to be a much larger print, but still looks pretty dandy in the small version. <sighs> It does have a PID tune option. Let's have a look. Let's have a quick look on M303. Set the PID parameters, indeed. See, PID must, must be provided, scaled by this factor, for compatibility with older firmwares. PID parameters are computed automatically when the M307 command is used to define the heater model, or from the default heater model if no M307 command is provided. You can use M301 to override those computed PID parameters, but this is not recommended because it prevents RepRap firmware from using different PID parameters depending on the heating phase. So there you go. <laughs> it does its own, it has like a, a computational heater model, which is like able, it means it can use different PID control methods in different parts of the printing uh, heating phase. That is my understanding. <laughs> you still need to tune the I don't think you do. I don't think you do. The whole point of the heat and... Uh, you probably do need to define those parameters correctly, that's true. But it's not the same PID tune that you would expect from Marlin. As a, I'm not... I'm, I'm definitely not an expert. I'm not trying to lecture anyone on how it works. But I did do a bit of reading when I was... Uh, setting up the previous uh, hot end for this. And it, it, it definitely works different to how you might expect if you're very used to Marlin firmware. It was very different from how I expected it to work. I was like, yep, yeah, BIT auto tune is just the way, it's just what we do. That's just how it works. But apparently there are better ways. So. It is a different model. Yeah, this is what I mean. It's not PID. It's like sort of similar, but not. It's sort of different. It does the same fundamental sort of thing, but in a different way. And it means you don't need to do a tune because it, you basically you're telling it the parameters of the heater. And it works out what the correct heating method needs to be for that heater. So you're kind of going like one level deeper, if that kind of makes sense, I think. <laughs> I'm not going to do, <laughs> do anything else now. 
Uh, I'm done now. I was going to the print finished, and the print is now finished. My voice is already starting to hurt, and I don't want to mess up this heating thing and this whole nozzle thing, so instead of doing it under pressure, I'm going to do it when I'm a bit more relaxed and not concentrating on other things. I will look into how to correctly tune the heater in the method that is not currently known as PID, but maybe a little bit. <laughs> uh, I think that is going to be it for today. Uh, maybe I'll do... I do want to do another stream next week. So if you're around again roughly the same time next week, we may be continuing with this if I've not had time to touch it between now and then. Or we'll be working on something else. Uh, I can try and promise. I can't promise anything because things happen. Like I was very nearly not going to do today's because the whole computer just decided to crash four times in a row just before starting. Three times, two times, whatever it was. It blue screened multiple times. So that is the aim. When is the Dice Hut and an Extruder giveaway? I don't ever remember saying there's a Dice Hut and an Extruder giveaway. <laughs> Who came up with that? I'm just sorry, I'm just enjoying clicking the uh, end stop. It's just a really nice clicking. Anyway, before I totally lose my voice, Thank you everyone for joining me for the live stream today. It's been good fun. I think we've learned a few things. I certainly have. So, cool. <laughs> I'm so exhausted, I don't know what to say. Uh, yeah, hopefully live stream next week. My current target video to be up next is the Prusa mini review. This, there are some reasons why that's not really possible at the moment. But uh, I do want to do it quite soon. I might try and squeeze another video in beforehand. There is a whole kind of schedule I'm trying to work out this year, trying to get myself a little bit more engaged with deadlines and stuff so I don't have a kind of few months off like I did last time. Anyway, yeah, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one. Same time next week, probably. About 90% chance, I think. Goodbye.